Amazon's catalog upload process just got a major facelift. I'm gonna walk you through what those changes are and what it could mean to how you're gonna update your data on Amazon. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. So when you log in, first of all, you might notice there's a new section and header here. So you've got your inventory and catalog drop down. If you click on add products via upload and go to the download and inventory file, this page has seen an entirely new facelift. This is actually the first time I've even logged into it and I have some hot takes for you. First of all, the P and Q file finally is getting the limelight and it's no longer hidden. That's a cool thing by itself. The other thing I would say is that there's just a lot of streamlining to the process. So if we go down the list here, you can get products that are already listed in the catalog and do a listing loader. And so this is something where you might do uh, a, a file upload with all of the ASIN data. Here's what that file would look like. It's got SKU, price, quantity, that's pretty much it. And this is so you can update your quantity files or if you wanna update the prices in mass, here's a very quick template. I haven't used this template myself in probably seven years. It, it was good for its time, I just don't need it anymore. Next on the list is list products not currently in Amazon's catalog. We can download a product template, switch the country, and click a button. Here, this goes to our friendly old page. This is something that might look familiar to most people. And in here, you can select all the typical files. Here are files I've done in the past with soaps, tumblers, and a bunch of other things on the list. So we'll hit the back button here and go to the next one, which is update price and quantity. I'm, I'll be honest, I don't know what the difference between one and three is gonna be. Let's find out. Click on download. And we got a price and inventory file. Let's see how this file looks and see if it's any different than the one we just looked at to begin with. Pulling it over on screen here, going to the template. Pretty much looks the same to be terribly honest. Uh, same columns. So pick whichever one works best for you between the list products already and the update price and quantity. Supposedly you might be able to do a little bit more than just update the quantity in that first one. Not entirely clear. Update the product details. So this is edit your product details and offer information. Let's hit get product. And with the product template, you can make edits, processing summary to update details of the product listed prior to your last 50 file submissions. You can use a product template, which is gonna take us to that second one right here to provide or update all of the product details. For both options, you can use the partial update feature, which by the way, that is the cardinal rule of cataloging, right? Like you should never load anything into Amazon with the update filled in, unless it's partial update, you will delete attributes in your catalog. So if you delete something, uh, very hard to recover, which is why you should always check out this video next on how to download and back up your catalog because you definitely don't want to wipe that. that. That would be a very, very bad thing. So always fill in partial update as a best practice uh, so you don't wipe that out. Now, what's interesting though is I don't understand why uh, they would even include this here, but you can go over to the processing summary report. This is where your monitor upload status is, all the batch IDs and the file names. One thing I would really recommend is always use uh, a naming convention on flat file loading so you can like retrace your steps, especially if you got a data problem you're trying to correct, do ABC or what changes you make each file. Okay, so that was the update product details section. Not sure if products are in Amazon's catalog. Let's hit the get help button. So that says, if you're not sure the products are already in the Amazon's catalog, list your products with the list products already in Amazon's catalog first. You can also list products not currently in Amazon's catalog. <clears throat> you know, this is kind of a little confusing in here. Not really 100% sure why they're, they're, they're clicking into the ways and they're like, oh, list, this is a get help button, but then it just takes us to the other sections. That's kind of a little, uh, you know, they're probably gonna remove that section over time, it'd be my guess, it's kind of useless. Additional templates, please find additional templates supported for specific use cases, category specific inventory files and automate pricing files. So I have used this one quite a bit. I would say of the files on the screen, this is probably my second most used one, category specific inventory files. This is when I've got like, a, a, I wanna build the parentage and the parentage file won't go through when I use uh, the regular file. So if we click, click learn more here, I'm expecting this to take us to an old flow. Uh, nope, went to a new section. So let's see if we can figure this out. Inventory loader and listing loader, use global SKUs. Uh, the video tutorials, not what I was expecting, but there is a nice help file here. What I, oh, maybe this is what we're looking for. Template for specific categories. This is the file I was expecting them to load right here. So let's see where that takes us. 
Help topic not found. Thanks, Amazon. Super helpful. Broken system everywhere we go. Sometimes I feel like I'm praying to Jeff Bezos to get seller support. Um, okay, so how are we going to get there using the old way is if I would try and do this, let's go to download an inventory file. And if we hit the get listing loader, that's not the one we want. But when I did update product details, nope. We had it a second ago. Let's try this. Amazon.com. Here we go. So if you're going in here and you want to get the category specific files, there used to be a section down here where you could like go load them. I'm not seeing them at this stage. So they have moved those. And as you can see, when I was at the other place, I actually couldn't, maybe it's here. Image. Oh, okay. I found it. It was hiding at the bottom there. Inventory files. And do they still have category specific inventory files? And we found it it's right there. Let's click that. Let's see if this is still working. And as we scroll down, I want, let's see, I want template for specific categories, cameras, books, computers, health and personal care, BT, let's just see if this works. Download that, boom. Okay, so that function still works, but you had to get to this screen, which was on the download inventory old page, which they're now hiding. And you have to find the inventory file section which then you click on the category specific files. And that took us down a giant rabbit hole to get over there. So then we ended up here, we clicked that. Okay, so there you go. Now, if we open up this file, this is, this is gonna be a blank category specific file. And if we go to the data definitions, they will be slightly different, uh, but it's gonna be high level for the whole browse node and the category. If we go to the template in here and we scroll to the right, uh, these are all the different attributes and file things you can load. So you got like images in the yellow, red variations, basic stuff there. Uh, and just to make sure I hit this really home, we're going to go control F and go to the update column. This is in CC, Charlie, Charlie, update, delete. If you type in, and sometimes you click this little drop down, see how it didn't do anything. Let's see if I hit edit, enable editing, if that helps. All right, we got to go find it again. Got to love Excel sometimes. Hit update. And let's see if the drop down works now. Nope, still doesn't work. So if you do update and you don't load any, oh, nice. It can't be pre predefined. <laughs> oh my gosh. Partial update like this. Let's see if that works. That does, so, so I can't fill it in and I can't select it. Why, why, why does Amazon produce this stuff? Like what, what is even the point? Like I, I don't understand. Sometimes it just blows my mind. But if you were gonna find a file like this in Excel that actually worked and you typed in update or partial update, an update will delete anything you don't fill in and a partial update will only update the fields you fill in. So for example, if you had a size, so let's go to the size column for example, and we wanted, we wanted one listing to be updated to small, we could load SKU partial update small, it would go through just fine and it wouldn't delete the bullet points. But if you had put in size, skew, small, and then in this column for update, you put in update like that, it would wipe the data on the bullets, on the description, and everywhere else. So there's some wise things to learn when you're handling your catalog. You might also wanna check out Mag School where we have a catalog course where we go through in granular some of these catalog things you need to know, how to upload a template, how to do a parentage file, Lots of complex stuff. So check us out at mag-school.com. Enroll in the catalog course for a nice whopping $10 bill. Not bad at all, USD. All right, thanks. Let me know what you have questions on in the catalog. Post it in the comments section. We make videos all the time. And check out my catalog playlist with other things right here.